Fingal is the fastest growing county in Ireland. We must ensure that we grow sustainably and reduce our emissions and impacts on the environment. At Fingal County Council, we aim to show leadership on climate action and are working with stakeholders to build a new way forward. Fingal County Council has developed an energy management system and has made energy efficiency improvements of 34% across own operations since 2009. We're transitioning to a fully electric fleet. Energy performance contracts will ensure further savings on larger buildings. The energy performance of social housing stock is being improved continually. All new housing estates are being developed to the highest building energy standards. Our energy agency, Kadima, have developed a home energy saving kit which can be borrowed from any Fingal library. Fingal County Council is pushing the infrastructure in place to allow people make more sustainable lifestyle choices. We're developing greenways and cycleways through National Transport Authority funding. We're focused on boosting active travel across the county. We're building a stronger, safer network of walking and cycling routes. Our school streets and school zones have inspired more children and parents to walk and cycle to school. We're supporting bike and car sharing schemes. We're also running promotional campaigns to encourage people to walk and cycle. As our coastline is particularly vulnerable to the effects of climate change, the Council is working with all relevant national agencies and local stakeholders to build resilience to coastal change. We aim to find sustainable, effective solutions to complex problems. The Council is working to identify sites where space can be made for flood water. This can alleviate potential flooding problems while also improving habitats and water quality. Sustainable urban drainage systems of various scales are being included in new developments. As improvements on historical piped networks, these systems can reduce surface water runoff following heavy rain, improve water quality and provide an array of biodiversity, anemone and recreational benefits. In Fingal, we have a vibrant network of regional parks. Parks and open spaces combine a range of functions, including habitat for biodiversity, carbon storage, water management and amenity. This network combined provides our green infrastructure and we are working to continually enhance it. We are increasingly managing areas of grassland as wildflower meadows in line with National Pollinator Plan to provide food sources for pollinating insects. Fingal County Council provides infrastructure to enable people to recycle by providing broom banks and recycling centres. These accept a wide range of materials. In addition, discarded musical instruments and bicycles are being brought back to life. Contactless drinking water fountains are being installed to help reduce single-use plastic bottles. We provide allotments where people can grow their own food and help reduce food waste. We've made a lot of progress, but we have a lot more to do. Join us on the journey to a cleaner, healthier and more active society here in Fingal. Welcome to Dublin Climate Action Week 2021. On behalf of Fingal County Council, I'm delighted to welcome you to this climate action themed event. This week, 13th to 19th of September, each of the four Dublin local authorities, in partnership with CODEMA, Dublin's Energy Agency, and the Dublin Climate Action Regional Office, CARO, will host a range of online and in-person events across the Dublin region. These events will showcase the ongoing efforts that the Dublin local authorities are making to address climate change. The events aim to inspire, share knowledge and highlight best practice in taking climate action as we all work towards creating a healthier Dublin. Climate change is a global problem, but it impacts every one of us at a local level. By attending these events, you are increasing your knowledge and awareness of climate action. No action is too big or too small and taking action together will help us to build a more sustainable future 
for all citizens across the Dublin region. I hope that you enjoy this event. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Fingal County Council's webinar on sustainable business and the green economy, which is part of the first Dublin Climate Action Week programme. This programme involves all four Dublin local authorities, including Kodima and Dublin Caro. And I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Aoife Sheridan. I'm with Fingal County Council's Economic Enterprise, Tourism and Cultural Development Department, and I will be your host for the webinar this afternoon. We have a great panel lined up for you today to talk about sustainability and what it means for business, the green economy, the circular economy, and probably most importantly uh, for some of our attendees today is what Fingal County Council and other local agencies can do for business to help them become greener and more sustainable. Uh, before we kick off, I might just draw your attention to the Q&A facility that we have in the webinar. If you have any questions for the panel, uh, please do put them in the Q&A facility. We'll do our very best to answer some of your questions towards the end of the webinar. We may not get to every question, um, so if there are questions you'd like to follow up on or you'd like to engage further with any of the organisations represented here today at the webinar, please do email us at Fingal County Council. We'll be very happy to take your email and we'll do our best to come back to you. And that email address, in case you need it, is sustainablefingal at fingal.ie. Now, I'd like to welcome the panel and thank them very much for giving their valuable time today to be with us and share their knowledge uh, with the audience. Um, joining us today for the discussion are Ms. Ema O'Gorman, Fingal County Council's Director of Services for the Economic Enterprise, Tourism and Cultural Development Department. Mr. Oshin Gagan, Head of Fingal Local Enterprise Office, otherwise known as Fingal Leo. Mr. Anthony Cooney, CEO of Fingal Chamber and Ms. Eilish Harrington, CEO of Fingal Leader Partnership. So thanks very much for joining us this afternoon and I'd like to open up the discussion uh, by welcoming Mr. Anthony Cooney, CEO of Fingal Chamber. Anthony, I'd like to open up the discussion this afternoon about um, why don't we talk about the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. That has 17 sustainable development goals at its core, promoting a global par partnership to end poverty, to improve health and education, to reduce inequality and encourage economic growth. What are your thoughts about how the Sustainable Development Goals are influencing businesses today? Uh, th thanks, Aoife. And um, <clears throat> I suppose the Fingal Chamber, along with uh, our colleagues at Chambers Ireland, uh, have engaged with um, all the way along with the Sustainable Development Goals. And of the 17, there's five in particular that we have focused on for the Fingal region uh, out of the 17. Uh, that in no particular, well, I suppose they are on an order. We've got the gender equality, which is five uh, numbers, SDG eight, which is decent work and economic growth. Uh, nine is industry, innovation and infrastructure. 11 is sustainable cities and communities. And 13 is climate action. The uh, in relation to, to uh, how they're influencing How's influencing business? There's, uh, I suppose, there's on a number of levels. Aoife, you've got uh, supply chain, so you've got uh, in relation to the distance travel, the sustainability of goods. Uh, there's an issue around, as you know, uh, provision of plastic packaging. Uh, there's the purchase of uh, green energy. So a lot of businesses are engaging on a lot of different levels, <clears throat> and uh, you know we see it on, on a on a daily basis with more interaction with some of the companies that they're all starting more and more to look into the area of uh, uh, supply chain and the sustainable products that they're or that they're buying. One of the other areas is actually re recruitment, retention and representation. So if you think of the the uh, gender equality, it's not just uh, gender equality, it's, it's largely down to representation. And so everybody and there's more outreach for people to to represent their organizations either within their organization or in external bodies across a wide plethora of the community and the other one then is uh probably what we're all very aware of and it's probably the, the, the word that trips off everybody's tongue is the climate action and it's uh it's i don't think there's a day goes by now that you uh you don't hear about climate action and i think a lot of that sort of uh the 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 information that's in the public realm a lot of it comes from the business community so people in when they're in their workplace they're uh, they're hearing about it every day there's recycling bins there's uh, you know shredding there's uh, 
there's water systems in offices that you know don't use bottled water they're using uh, point of use water so it's um it's a it's a big issue so it's something that's driven most days by most companies some to a greater degree than others so the awareness is being created from within the organizations not only uh, from the companies that are employing people but also people see it on on tv of course but uh but i think it's a huge issue for us we've got uh if you take, think about it, we've got a number of different sort of areas that's of concern. There's non-visible waste, which is things like uh, ocean plastics. So we don't really see it. It's out there in the ocean somewhere. Uh, there's visible packaging, like visible uh, waste, like pack packaging and bottles, which are in the environment. And then there's uh, awareness levels. So it's, I think what people are trying to do to counteract it, which also helps the environment is things like active travel and cycleways which encourage people to cycle to work because people think nothing of dropping into the car and drive five miles or two miles. Whereas with the provision of the cycleways, I think it's a it's a huge encouragement and incentive to people to uh, cycle to work. And I know in some of the the cycleways provided by Fingal, and actually it's in your video earlier, the Baldoyle piece there, uh, Baldoyle to Port Marnock, like it was a fabulous piece of in infrastructure and the soon to be uh, the broad meadow estuary like that will encourage people to travel to either Donabate or into town to work uh, by bike as opposed to driving cars. So I think businesses uh, are engaging. The SDGs are influencing businesses, and it's very much in the in the mindset of the businesses as they go do their their daily activities. That's great. Thanks, Anthony. And if I could ask you a follow-up question to that, you know, you, you kind of outlined all all the influences that are coming from the sustainable development goals on business. Um, but really, when businesses are, are looking at, you know, locating, uh, be it in Fingal, Dublin, in Ireland, is sustainability high on their agenda? Uh, it, it is very much so. And um, I know that a lot of the, the uh, the FDIs, for example, if you went back three or four years ago, uh, saying the sustainability of uh, the infrastructure they're going into probably would have been somewhere at the bottom end of the top 10. Now it's very much number one. And uh, that's a, been a sea change in the last two or three years. But I think all businesses have, um, have uh, uh, embraced the uh, sustainability culture somewhere within their agenda, some more than others. Uh, you know, I, I think in relation to uh, you know climate action and sustainability, we as a country are somewhat behind our our goals. But I think it's it's very much now in the public domain. It's very much in the business people's um, mindset that sustainability is it's probably the only show in town. In that you know, if we're not sustainable, if we don't make things sustainable, if we're not careful of the environment and and retract from what we've done in the past. We won't have a, an environment to live in because we're at crisis proportions, I believe now. Thanks, Anthony. That's really interesting to learn about how sustainability is really climbing up the agenda for business in terms of how important it is and how they're responding to it. So thanks very much for that. I, I'd like to go to Oshin Gagan now, the head of Fingal Leo, and just you know, expanding on what Anthony has, has been saying about uh, the business community at large and the importance of sustainability. Can I ask you, what is the relevance of the green economy to small businesses, particularly when you consider the resource constraints that small businesses operate under? Um, yeah, so I suppose, can you hear me OK, Aoife? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good. So it's a very good question, Aoife, um, because I think in reality it can be very difficult, or at least it has been kind of heretofore for many small businesses to, to see the real benefits. Uh, to them are becoming more sustainable. I mean, look at in, in reality, historically, it wouldn't have been seen to be a priority issue. Rather, it would have been more to seen to be something of a luxury thing, um, something that the, the larger companies would be um, would would have the resources to 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 focus on. So small, I mean, micro enterprise and small businesses need to they're mostly focus on fulfilling orders, increasing revenue, increasing margin, servicing customer needs and, and keep, keeping their ship afloat. Um, so they're the everyday priorities principally for smaller businesses, but it certainly is changing now. And uh, we've seen that uh, particularly in very recent times. Um, I think things were put on a bit of a hiatus when COVID struck, because if you ask any business what the priority was in the last 18 months, sustainability wouldn't really have been there. It was all about 
surviving COVID, it's all about getting through this crisis. But now that things are are hopefully moving in the right direction on that front, it certainly is moving more uh, central stage. I think for small businesses, one of the big issues is costs involved in greening your business in embracing sustainability because it is something that's perceived to be expensive um, and unless unless small businesses will see very clearly what the benefits are of investing in sustainability and unless you see that those benefits outweigh the costs and that that's abundantly clear then most or many small businesses uh, are not going to allocate the resources necessary to do it so that that uh, education piece is extremely important it is completely understandable that that is the situation now, uh, but in reality, there is a compelling uh, reason for which SMEs need um, need to address this. Because look at as your uh, video said, climate change is happening. It's it's an issue. It's not going away. Ignoring the obvious isn't an option anymore. Um, and small businesses, just as much as large businesses, need to consider the very real implications of the climate. Uh, crisis that they that we are facing. Okay, so every small business, every every business indeed is going to be impacted very substantially, and that's a fact, and it's it's indisputable. So you know, I, I heard somebody say recently, climate change is is like cancer. The longer you wait, the worse your chances are. You know, and that's something that we all need to take on board, both in businesses and and uh, and uh, at every level of our society. But it's also indisputable, I think, um, is the implications of government policies, and they're really beginning to bite now, and they will continue to bite in the coming years. And they were set out largely in the Climate Action Plan in 2019. So there's a whole range of uh, things that are coming down the tracks. The move to a low, low carbon economy is going to accelerate massively. There's obviously a huge uh, move away from fossil fuels. Energy costs are going to increase hugely, um, and businesses will have to become less reliant upon fossil fuels. Uh, transport systems are changing. You know, there's a target to have over a million EVs, electric vehicles by 2030 uh, in this country. Now, whether we meet the target or not is, is, is another day's work, but nonetheless, that is absolutely the direction we're moving in. Packaging is changing hugely uh, and radically. And by 2030, there's going to be a total ban on single use plastic convenience items. And the cost and penalties for waste is going to, uh, you know, they're, they're going to increase hugely as well over the over the coming years. So all of these things are, are pointing to the fact that businesses have to address the issue and they're going to have to address it on a continual basis in the future. And it's becoming a much more high priority, high priority issue. So, I mean, I suppose what we'd be trying to say to small businesses by doing something now about this, you are going to put yourself ahead of the curve, if you like. You're going to be in a better position, a stronger position to deal with the implications for your business going forward. OK. Um, I think importantly, uh, and lastly, Aoife, this is also uh, very much a, a customer driven agenda and you know it is becoming socially unacceptable in the EU uh, to high, have a high carbon footprint. So it's not just good from our CSO perspective, I suppose, you know, uh, because businesses that are considered to be environmentally reckless, they're going to be indeed they probably are already pariahs. Uh, so it's 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 um, it's already a clear competitive advantage to be seen to be environmentally responsible, but it's going to be absolutely not just a competitive advantage, it's going to be essential in the future. Thanks, Oshin. A lot of challenges there for, for businesses and particularly in small businesses with, with their constraints, with you know the bottom line, trying to make a profit, trying to stay in business, the, the number of the people they have employed. So in terms of that, uh, and for any members of the audience who might be kind of in, in those kind of micro enterprises or small businesses, what can Fingal Leo do for those businesses who, for those businesses who are looking to become greener, who are looking to become more sustainable? Yeah, yeah, and again, a good question. I suppose I, um, we have. It's, it's, I suppose it's come centre stage to our agenda more recently. Okay, so just some months back, uh, earlier on this year, a new program was launched in the local enterprise offices called the Green for Micro program. So this is the first initiative that's on our desk specifically addressing this whole issue for micro enterprises, particularly businesses up to ten employees. But I think there, are, yeah, there, there, there are probably two main categories of ways that the Leo, the local enterprise office, is going to be working on this in the future. One of them is through provision of information and advice. You mentioned awareness earlier on, uh, providing information really to small businesses on what is available to them, uh, really to help them in a very practical way, giving them access to the expertise that they might need to green their business to become more sustainable and um, to see, you know, to, in order to en enable them to 
um, to see the opportunities indeed that may exist in this whole area. And the Green for Micro program is a first step, if you like, for us in that direction. Uh, secondly, I think funding is a big deal. It's a big issue for, for micro enterprises. It always has been, always will be, I suppose. So in this whole area, we need to make sure that businesses have access to the funding that they need to, to row in with government policy in this. And this is absolutely critical. I would be very hopeful that there will be more funding provided and all of the signals certainly are that uh, that uh, additional funding will be provided for schemes specifically for micro enterprises. You know, there, there are grant schemes out there. There's a lot of businesses that, they, that don't necessarily know about them and don't know the detail of them and maybe haven't looked at them before. I think that'll change. I think they will start looking at them. Our job is to make make that information available to them to help the small businesses to apply for that funding and to give them the information advice on the various different schemes and other funding mechanisms that are that are out there so yeah so we, we'll be I, I reckon we the local enterprise office will certainly be very busy in this space in the coming years it's one of it's certainly moved center stage for us as one of the key priority areas for small businesses over the next six years plus that's great, Oshin. And just in case there's any members of the audience there who are, who are interested in getting in touch with the Leo office to find out more about Green for Micro or or who are looking for some of that expertise that that you referred to, how did they get in touch with Fingal Leo? Well, we're, we we run a business advice clinic, and that's the first kind of port of call, if you like. We have a website, localenterprise.ie forward slash Fingal, and you can navigate that and find your way around that. Um, the first thing that we would generally do if somebody approaches us inquiring about supports, whether it's uh, uh, sustainability supports or, or otherwise, is we would invite them to a business advice clinic completely free of charge. We meet up with them, one of our business advisors will meet up with them. Our business advisors are up to speed on all of the different services, including, including um, environmental incentives to help businesses to become more green. So yeah, th th that'd be the first step would be to make an appointment with us. We'll have a talk to you and we'll hopefully be able to provide you with some direction, if not more. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Yoshin. Some some great supports there. So if there's anyone there in the audience who's interested, please do get in touch with Leo and find out how uh, Fingal Leo can help you become greener. Um, so there's great supports there from Leo, but uh, they're not the only game in town, thankfully. Um, the, the LEADER programme also provides supports to businesses. And I'd like to go to Eilish Harrington, now the CEO of Fingal LEADER Partnership. Eilish, for those of us who don't know, uh, what is the LEADER programme and what does it mean for business? Hi Aoife, um, thank you very much for, for having me today, including me in this. Um, yeah, I suppose for people who aren't aware of LEADER, LEADER is an EU funded programme that um, the main aim of LEADER is to strengthen the rural economy and improve the quality of life in rural areas. I suppose this is done through focusing on the principles of innovation, sustainability, social inclusion and economic viability. So I suppose in Dublin, like there's 29 local action groups across Ireland in Dublin, Fingal Leader Partnership is the implementing body and Fingal County Council is the financial partner on this programme. So what it does in essence is we give out grants to community groups, small to medium enterprises, environmental projects, community and voluntary sporting organisations. So it provides funding for these projects across all of rural Dublin, where we have Fingal is our largest catchment area. That's obviously because Fingal is the most rural area in um, Dublin, it probably makes up for about 70%. And then we run also in Dunleary, parts of Dunleary, Ratdown and South Dublin. So we work across all the local authorities as well. Um, so basically it's promoting economic growth for the businesses here today, economic growth, job creation, which is essential to the growth of rural areas, keeping employment in rural areas, bringing people to the rural areas, keeping them vibrant. So the sustainable use of the local and natural resources also improve the economic viability of these areas. So I suppose for people who are listening today and saying like Oshin was echo, I echo what Oshin was saying there, that it can be quite expensive for small to medium enterprises, obviously, like it's becoming more important, but there's also costs for the businesses. So what leader can do is, and probably the strength of it, is offering grants up to the value of 200,000 to um, small to medium enterprises. This is at 75% of the grant amount. So if an enterprise, I suppose when we say small to medium, we do fund individuals or groups that are looking for a viable rural enterprise idea, rural businesses, micro SMEs, um, food initiative projects. We do farm. So if there's a farm family wishing to diversify into new activities, including like the artisan foods, rural tourism, farm shops, 
and anything that is looking to support the job creation, entrepreneurship, enterprise development, especially post COVID, some of the stuff that Oshin touched on there, like obviously there are big factors now for all the SMEs across Fingal and post Brexit environment too. So really, if somebody comes to us, any business and in terms of the environment, if they're looking at renewable energy projects, we can help fund capital. So if there's like biomass burners, looking at energy audits for the company and action plans coming out of that, so we can provide the match funding for those. So I suppose in essence for the businesses, it just makes it that bit easier because we, we appreciate that we all have the goal of getting to a greener economy, but there can be those upfront costs for the businesses and it just assists in helping them do this. That's great, Ish. Thanks for that. And you know, you you mentioned there some of the initiatives that you funded previously. You know, um, I, could you tell us a little bit more about how Leader is advancing that green agenda? Yeah, I suppose in the the current Leader program, we do have three pillars, and the first one is like economic enterprise job creation. The second is social inclusion, and the third is environment. So that's kind of changing now that environment won't be a standalone pillar. It will be looking at everything that we're funding. We'll be looking at an environmental element, making sure that, you know, companies, community groups are, you know, are concerned and it's, it's high on their agenda for everything. So what we are currently doing, and I think, again, I'm echoing some of the stuff Anthony and Oshin were saying that as everything is happening and we're getting closer to the 2030 goals, there's an education gap. And we would have seen this nationally in the last program that environment was at an underspend. So currently Fingal Leader Partnership um, with the Dublin Rural Lag, we're running two educational um, training workshops over the coming months. One is around sustainable water resources, one is around renewable energies. So we're looking at educating people, businesses, community groups on how they can actually do this because we just found that there was a bit of a barrier around how people can access these funds how they can actively get involved. So I suppose for the next kind of six months, we'll be running those workshops. We can do tailor made ones as well. If there's a need from the business community in Fingal to say, look, you know, to do some signposting to get out and meet with companies as well. Um, we have funded um, the big one. I suppose we did like a biomass burner. So looking at, again, the circular economy for a business in Fingal of their own waste. It was um, wood, recycling the wood back into their own energy efficiency. So it's just um, it's getting the word out there for us and trying to let businesses know that there are the funds there to assist them. I suppose is what we're trying to do at the moment, because as Oshin said there too, you know, a lot of the same things we are all working with the small to medium enterprises. Everybody's coming out of COVID. So a lot of stuff has been put on a bit of a hold. And I think now as businesses are getting back, everybody's going back to the workplace. I think it's going to become a real um, important topic for the next 12 months. That's great, Eilish. And if there's anybody uh, in the audience who wants to point out more about what Leader can do for them, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, if they get in touch, we have um, our website, which is dublinruralleader.ie. And we go through all of the um, examples of projects, how to get in touch with us. We have a team in the Office of Development Officers and a Leader Program Coordinator, so they can ring us. Um, they can ring myself. They can ring a member of the team. They can fill out an expression of interest online and we would go. They can either come in and meet with us in the office or we'd go out to them on their premises and you know talk them through it. And they would have a dedicated support from the start to finish of the project. So we would work with them from the expression of interest through the application through claiming the funds. So if anybody has any ideas, just to give us a ring and just to discuss how we can have the next steps. That's great, Eilish. I'm sure that, that you might get one or two phone calls after after that from somebody in the audience. So thanks very much for that. Some great supports there from Leader. And you know that's going to become more important, as Eilish has said, as the focus of the EU shifts uh, to shine a light on these green initiatives, you know, in, in light of you know where they're going in terms of climate action. Um, I'd like to talk now to, to Ema O'Gorman, who's the Director of Services with Fingal County Council and who heads up the Economic Enterprise, Tourism and Cultural Development Department. Ema, this year Fingal County Council launched the Sustainable Fingal Initiative. And can you tell us a little bit more about that initiative and, and what the Council is hoping to accomplish with it? Yep, um, thanks Aoife and thanks to all my colleagues for participation today. It's a hugely important uh, discussion. Uh, subject um, and something as Lushina has said and everybody has said on the panel that is going to become more and more uh, to the forefront of our minds over the next coming years. Um, so Sustainable Fingal um, is really about helping businesses to first and foremost look inward to see 
what small changes they can make um, to start that transition towards a more sustainable business. So from the very basics of doing, you know, looking at the light bulbs that they use um, to water systems that they use, checking for leaks. Um, and Ida should have pointed out about um, energy audits and that side of things. So we're just trying to draw people's attention to that. So that's one stream of it. And that, I suppose, it's an action that came out of our the Council's Climate Action Plan. And our role in economic development is that outward facing piece of the Council um, looking to engage with the business community. Most of the other actions in the Climate Action Plan are within the organisation, I suppose, whereas it's probably unusual in that it's outward facing. So trying to engage with businesses on that front, we published Sustainable Fingal earlier on in the year. We have a dedicated website with a number of resources there. We ran a competition uh, to provide energy audits for uh, businesses. But it's just to start the thinking process and really um, get businesses thinking about how they might be able to save as those costs start to rise, particularly around fossil fuels. But that's only one side of it. On the other side of it is recognising the green entrepreneur. And I mean, Oshin has alluded to it through the Green for Micro, looking at where that green entrepreneurial spirit is, that circular economy and how we can develop that out, how we can encourage that small business idea to grow, that seedling to grow. Um, and it's hugely, hugely important. And we've seen it, I think, particularly in the light of COVID. We've seen very small businesses diversify and look at reusing, repurposing their premises, their product, and changing. Um, we recently ran a series of markets in Raymore Castle in Balbriggan, and a number of the vendors had completely pivoted into the green reuse, reuse type product uh, to sell. And we're doing really, really well out of it because I think as we move um, through this very difficult period, consumers, citizens alike are becoming far more conscious of the origin of the products that they're buying. So if it's a, a cup of coffee in the coffee shop, conscious cup, or if it's at a minimum biodegradable at this stage, even in terms of our own events planning that we run in the council, trying to make those greener, cleaner events, we, prov we produced a green event guide, you know, just a how to take away um, that single use plastic. So when we talk about this uh, sustainable um, bingo, every element of the business food chain, I suppose, from the very inception of an idea through to an office worker who just wants to do their little bit by making sure they turn off their monitor every day. So we try to provide some advice and guidance with that in partnership with everybody that's on the call here today, because we all are trying to reach the same agenda point. Thanks, Emer. And can I ask you, what, what are the council's plans for future engagement with the business economy on the on with the business community on the green economy? You know as well, Aoife, we have the Think All In It Together Charter, and that's a very important piece of work that we undertook during COVID. It really started, we started to recognise and see that businesses were speaking to their neighbours, working together, using local suppliers, really because you couldn't go beyond your 2K or your 5K in some instances, and supply is short. Brexit has had a huge impact. So shop local is not just a consumer message. It's a business to business message too. So I would envisage our uh, sustainable Fingal piece moving into that Fingal in it together and see if we can develop communities of practice, look at synergies between businesses, look at learnings from business. So if somebody has conducted an energy audit in um, a paper production facility, you know, there's learning from that and just try to help push out that message. Obviously then council through our own promotional work um, and other items that we have on our agenda. So for example, Town Centre First, it's going to be hugely important. And that's about the revitalization of our towns and villages, our rural economy, as Eilish mentioned, getting people working locally, shopping locally, that has a multitude of effects. It keeps the euro local, it keeps local suppliers in business, and it reduces carbon footprint because you know, you're not traveling, food isn't moving. You just have this natural ecosystem. And I think we're very, very lucky in Fingal that we have such a wealth of businesses from the agri-food sector to high-tech manufacturing to biopharmacy, huge and support services and all of that. So everything that somebody living in Fingal needs can be found within the county. So a lot of ours, again, is raising the profile of those small to medium businesses that can supply local products locally. Um, we would have supported a sustainable enterprise again, an app earlier on um, in 
last year about again showing people what's on your doorstep what you can buy from locally be it on a, as a business to business basis or a b2c business to consumer basis it's the same conversation so we'd be very keen to kind of continue to push out those messages and also make your business aware of bike to work schemes things like that as anthony had mentioned about the green infrastructure that's going in place across the county as that becomes more prevalent those schemes become ever more important and it comes down then to talent retention. You know, it's an incentive to an employee if they have a safe cycle facility in work, a safe route to work. You know, that's, and if somebody is taking the job knowing that their employer is environmentally responsible, I think everybody has mentioned that at some point in this conversation today, that goes a long way to talent retention. And you'll see that post Brexit and post COVID, there is huge churn um, and just trying to, limit the movement of people I suppose through the county in a sustainable way. That's great Emer. it sounds like the future really for the council is opening up that conversation and, and getting involved with businesses and facilitating that kind of collaborative approach to climate change and in that vein I think your department has worked with a, with a small business now that, that might illustrate you know circular economy thinking for those of the people in the audience now who, who may wonder what what that looks like um, do you have a video that you want to, to run now? We do indeed um, this is a really really interesting business and um, using kind of food waste and kind of complete circular economy um, I let this video speak for itself um, but I suppose it's cream of the crop is the name of the business and um, we'd be delighted to work with them. Hi, my name is Giselle Makinde. I'm Brazilian and I live in Ireland for the past three years. And September 2020, I started a company called Cream of the Crop Gelato, which I made gelato out of surplus food. The idea of have Cream of the Crop came of the food waste. So right now, the last report uh, is the world is wasting 2.5 billion tons of food every year. I have this idea said, OK, I'm a chef. Why not to use my knowledge and skills to transform good and perfect food that is going to waste in something nice and sweet and delicious? So the idea of gelato came after. But then I start contacting more and more people and then find out there's much more surplus food when you reach supermarkets. But now I have so many others company uh, reaching out to me through social media. So I collect whatever people are willing to give it to me and trying to tr transform in the best gelato that I can do. And we are already reaching two, two tons of food that we transform in, into gelato so far. So I'm always trying to find ideas that complement what I'm doing with the gelatos. I deliver the gelatos into a cooler bag not not uh, in a box paper box anymore which I, I did in the beginning so i'm already moving to a metal container that will give me uh, more possibilities in terms of reusing if you don't have any use you can give it back to me and then i will give it to you another customer so keep the idea of the circular economy in. so right now my idea is first to show people that we are wasting loads of food and then we have to stop and then tell other business that they can use the same idea as well. Right now I'm, I'm still pinching myself <laughs> to see everything that happened in, in one year. I never imagined that I will be at the place that I am right now. Well, that was a, a great example there, just really illustrating how the circular economy works, you know, and, and really inspiring in terms of taking waste products like leftover food and creating a new product, which obviously there's a very strong market for. Um, it's really inspiring, really creative. And, you know, I, I think that's really what, what this panel is really here to talk about today. Um, we, we're approaching the end of our, our webinar now, but uh, we do still have time for a few questions from the floor. So um, I might just uh, put this question out there in terms of, you know, Fingal is very well known as a strong ag agribusiness sector. You know, we have major food producers like Keelings, Country Crest, Kios, they're all located in Fingal. 
And uh, as we just saw there from cream of the crop, there are opportunities to explore new new markets through circular economy thinking. Um, I'd love to ask the panel what their thoughts are on what the future for the circular economy is in Fingal. Anthony, I might put that to you. What do you think? Are there opportunities there? You're on mute there, Anthony. You might just. The most common term of 2020 has still survived <laughs> into 2021. <laughs> so yep. apologies for that. Um, yeah, I believe I believe there is um, uh, like a, a future for the, the the circular economy. We've got uh, you know for things like the material used in products, it's going to have to be sustainable. It's going to have to be recyclable. It's going to have to be reusable. Uh, you know, and as everyday items, a lot of people on this call when they you know you bring home your groceries on a Thursday or Friday or whatever day, it's generally speaking now I get the impression you know somebody comes back from the supermarket and we've got a, a, a boot full of plastics and uh, because everything is is, in, is packaged, you know, so much packaging, everything is, is boxed off as such. And uh, but I think there, there are some initiatives starting now, and I believe one of the major retailers is just starting to roll out on a project uh, trial basis, uh, a bottle recycling scheme. So it's a rec receiving plastic bottles back in. And they're going to provide a voucher for it. So, it's it's one of the initiatives, and it's, it does it does happen in other countries on the continent and uh, in mainland Europe. And I believe that you know, from a circular economy point of view, we're going to have to look at all possibilities, because there's, as I'm sure Fingal County Council know more than bet, know better than anybody else, the amount of product that's you know been taken away each week, uh, possibly going to landfill. We're lucky in that we have some very good recycling facilities in the county, and. Uh, and their opening hours are, you know, they're quite extensive. And uh, but I think we just have to look maybe lower down the scale in a lot of cases. And um, you know, business in general, uh, a lot of people are now starting to look at the circular economy. And the, and you're right, you know, the big, the food processors and so on are looking at it. And it's uh, they've got to find a balance between what the consumer will accept, what their client, their middle client, who's the retailer, will accept, and what they can manage within the confines and the operational. Uh, te technicalities of their business. So I think there's, um, you know, we, we've got a long way to go. I think we're, we're really at the journey, the start of the journey now. And I think we have to create an awareness for um, uh, the circular economy and we got to keep pushing the theme. So events like this are hugely helpful in that regard. Thanks, Anthony. And just uh, I've got another question here from from a member of the audience, and I might put it to Ulfine. Um, The question is whether the circular economy is on the radar of small business um, because of its huge potential to impact them. Uh, Ushin, can I put that one to you? Um, yeah, if, if, is it on the, I, I would answer that by saying in some cases, yes, it is, but in the majority of cases, it hasn't been there. You know, I, I like I think what we need to do is to move the agenda and drive the agenda on this and to demonstrate to businesses that they have to um, it, it has to be on their radar. OK, I mean, I mentioned there a few minutes ago um, one use single use plastics are going to be banned in this country very soon. OK, well, relatively soon. And that's the direction we're moving. So businesses have to embrace this and they have to be thinking of ways where, where as I suppose, as, as uh, uh, in, in the agencies, not necessarily going to come up with the ideas, if you like. We are dependent very much on entrepreneurs to come up with the ideas for this. What we can do as government agencies and as state uh, bodies is to provide the funding and provide them the um, steer the, the uh, entrepreneurs to enable them to learn how they can do it. Okay, but um, there are loads and loads of opportunities, and there will there will be um, plenty of opportunities in this whole area for businesses. And indeed, like I said, it's in some cases not going to be an option. They're going to have to, in some cases, um, look to the circular economy as opposed to the linear economy. Thanks, Oshin. Um, I just have another question here from a member of the audience that I, I'd like to put to the panel, um, and that's regarding the logistics uh, sector. Um, so the, the question is, uh, what business supports are available uh, for capital and mobile investments to address climate change issues for the transport logistics businesses? Obviously, they're very heavy users of fossil fuel. You know, are there any examples out there of someone who's done something? I, I might ask that uh, to, to Ailish. Ha, have you had any experience with leader of uh, anybody in 
uh, working in, in that kind of logistics area doing climate projects or is that an area that is something to look to in the future? Um, yeah, Eva, I suppose no is the answer that, that we haven't had any experience in it to date, but I think that's because a lot of um, like it's really becoming the agenda now going towards 2030. So I think that all those type initiatives, as Oshin was saying, we're at the beginning of the journey. So I think it's an education thing and I think it's the stakeholders that are on this call and, and other people who are probably attendees today, how we can work together to try and get that information, you know, join the pieces together for people of who can fund what and do it in a collaborative approach. I think um, the video there at the beginning of Fingal County Council, there's a lot of things happening in the transport, you know, within their own stock. And I think that's going to filter out to the whole business sector. So I think it's something we can fund going forward, assisting people, but we haven't done it. But I think it's something for all of us to probably look at, you know, everybody here today who, who has an interest in it and how we can, um, I, I think a mapping of the funding streams. Of, of who can fund what and how we can probably, you know, complement each other and where the strength is on, you know, on the funders here today. But I think that really has to start with an education piece of what's available and what's out there. Aoife, could I just jump in on this one very briefly, please? Yeah, go ahead. Um, just in relation to that, the, the, the SEAI play a very important role in this country as well as Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. And I know they, they have a number of schemes that are available um, that are, you know, well-funded schemes specifically for businesses. In the event that a logistics company or a business is um, is is looking at transforming their business substantially, and it's going to incur significant costs in doing that in order to be more sustainable and and be more environmentally friendly, there may well be funding available to that business to do that. So, you know, and I, I know there's one scheme that the SEAI run called the EXEED e -X -E -E -D scheme, which is, I think they provide funding of up to a million euro for for significant uh, projects. And it, it can range between, depending on the technicalities, between 50 and 70 percent of the costs that the business is going to incur. So there are schemes, um, there are some schemes already there that that company may be able to avail of. Um, but I mean, as Ailey said there as well, yeah, there's going to be a lot more of this coming down the tracks. I would expect and hope that there will be schemes available to help, particularly businesses that are very dependent on the transport area, which is massive energy users in this country, um, to enable them to become more, uh, you know, um, to reduce the carbon footprint. Just to come in on that as well, Aoife, if I might. Um, so we have our uh, sustainable business piece of our website in Fingal. So what we will do, is um, pulled together. We've done an audit before on community type funding and what's available there. So we might do the same on kind of green enterprise funding, what's available and pool a central resource and have it on our website and make that, you know, those linkages available to all the chamber members, uh, anybody that's interacting with um, Irish and Leader and the enterprise office as well. So I think it'd be very, very useful as a guide um, to have that in the centre because I, mean, I wouldn't publish a document because as soon as you publish it, it'll be gone out of date. But just to have a central repository online that we can point businesses to for those types of funding streams from EU right the way down to local level. That's great. Th thanks, Emer. And, you know, in terms of what Fingal County Council is doing, you know, um, the European Green Deal, that's that's a roadmap to becoming more environmentally and economically sustainable for the whole EU, looking to make the EU climate neutral by 2050. Um, you know, the, the video at the outset kind of outlined some of the initiatives that the Council is doing to become more sustainable and to translate that global vision into action at a local level. Are there any other initiatives that the Council has underway at the minute uh, in terms of, you know, ecotourism or biodiversity or farm to fork or anything like that, that we have in train at the minute that you'd like to bring to the attention of the audience? Yeah, I am sure. Yep. Um, I suppose the video set out a, our move for our electric fleet, our achieving uh, achievement of the ISO standard for energy reduction in our corporate buildings. But again, it's all very inward looking, you know, so with the outward looking piece, we're creating new wetlands. Um, in the county, you know, that the video alluded to it, it provides runoff for rain and for flooding, but it also increases plant life, it increases animal wildlife, um, and it's also a tourist spot, you know, somewhere to visit. Um, you would have seen on the news last week, we introduced um, a herd of ancient Irish goats to host heads to manage the gorse there. Again, thinking creatively, our biodiversity officer, very creative in his thinking on that, you know, and just getting 
having minimal impact on the environment, but achieving the same goal. Um, farm to fork is hugely important. We have a massive agri-food sector in the county and working with local businesses, look, working with the hospitality sector in particular, food provenance is hugely important to um, kind of the foodie tourists and eco-tourism. So, the, you know, if you're sitting in a restaurant in Swords or Blanchardstown or Malahide, wherever you might be, if you know the spuds in your plate came from Rush, that goes a long way in selling that whole tourist proposition. Um, and obviously it's achieving sustainability goals as well. You know, so buying local, it's it's fulfilling a number of functions. You're helping keeping two businesses on the road. You're ensuring, um, again, carbon footprint is minimal for the transportation of goods. You know, you're having massive impact and you're raising awareness about what is on offer. We really have a Garden County. Um, so, and the whole ecotourism, walking trails, cycling trails, visiting our heritage properties as part of that. Very, very keen to engage with businesses on that front, you know, where we've moved into, um, you know, cargo bike provision and, you know, cycling without age. There are numerous bike tour operators operating in the county, which is a really nice way to visit, spend money in our local towns and villages, but doing it without the car, you know, um, and I can't say that enough. I think we really are moving rapidly to, to where cars are not going to be welcome in our towns and villages for the most part. Yeah, I, I think we've seen a real shift during COVID into, a, I suppose, more appreciation of our local areas. Uh, and, you know, with the advent and the rise of co-working and working from home, you know, I, I think that those the attractiveness of the local areas is really going to increase. And then the opportunity to go have a swim if you're working in Balbriggan, go down to the beach and have a swim at lunchtime or, or go for a run along, you know, a, a section of the cycleway or something like that. You know, all of that is going to become more popular, I think, as we move through the years. So I'd like to thank everybody on the panel for their time this afternoon. I think we've had a really interesting discussion on sustainability in the green economy and and in particular what's out there for, for businesses in terms of grants, et cetera, that they might be able to avail of or information and help. So um, I hope that the attendees today at, at the webinar have you know, got some information out of it that's useful to them and maybe even a little bit of inspiration maybe from the video of Cream of the Crop. Um, and as I said at the top of the webinar, if you do want to uh, talk to any of the people here today on the panel or any of their organisations, um, whether it's Leo, the Chamber, Fingal County Council or, or Leader, do get in touch either directly with them or if you do want to get in touch with the Fingal County Council, you can contact us at sustainablefingal at fingal.ie or you can check out that website and you can get rooted to that email address. So. If we didn't get your questions uh, from the chat, I know we only took one or two here this afternoon, please do email them in. We'll try and come back to you and we're very happy to engage with business and have those conversations. They're going to be really important as we move forward in, in order to address all of these uh, targets that we have for Europe under the EU Green Deal and the climate action targets we're trying to reach. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us as part of Climate Action Week and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you from all of us. Goodbye. Thank you.